Shalom, everyone. It's Tahila from the Kifar. Um, so I've been promising you guys that I was going to provide um, all of the resources that I use to do our Morocco country study. And so I have made good on that promise. And you can find all of the videos and worksheets and resources, everything that we used um, while we were doing our study on the website on the latest blog post. Um, and so in this video, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the planning process and just give you a little bit more background um, on what we did from week to week. And so for our country study, um, the first week that we do for each of the countries really just goes into all the basic information um, that you would want to know about a country. So what continent it's located on, where it is in that country, what are the countries that surround it, um, what language do they speak, um, what does the flag look like? So sort of those those basic facts we cover in that first week. And then what we do the other three weeks um, or four weeks, depending on the month, really just depends on that country. So when I got started just in planning um, each of these months, I just wrote down all of the different things that come to mind when I think about what it means to study a country. So everything from um, the geography to animals, language, food, um, clothing, architecture, all of those different things. Um, and then I narrowed that list down based on what was feasible for us, both in the time frame, um, in the four or five weeks that we have, and then also feasible for the student. So the, the ages that we're working with, what's developmentally appropriate um, and what might be a little bit too much. And so this was designed for a um, almost five-year-old and an almost six-year-old. So someone who's in their last year of preschool and um, in kindergarten. And so... Um, while they're able to retain a lot of information and they're super bright, I didn't want it to be too much that by the time we get to the end of the month, they don't really remember what we did um, in the first week or two. And so based on what was left in that list, what I, after I did you know, what I was going to cut out, um, I basically just split that up over the remaining three weeks that we have. So, you know, the first week is just that general overview. And then the other three weeks, we sort of focus on different areas. Um, so I'm going to just talk to you about what we did week by week. So the first week, because this is their first country, we also um, talked about what it means to travel to another country, how you get there, um, what is the process of going through an airport, and that's where they got their um, passports and boarding passes, and we talked about, you know, the, the importance of these documents. And again, everything, um, links to absolutely everything that we use is on the, the blog post that's posted, so definitely check that out, and the link is in the um, comments below. And so, not the comments, the description, sorry. And so um, they got their passports. And then, um, so the first thing that we did is go to identify Morocco on a map. Um, so you can see um, th one of the, the large maps that we have on the wall behind me. Um, and then we also have several other maps um, throughout the room. And so after we found it on this one, we discussed, you know, where is it? What continent is it on? Is it in the northern part of the continent or the southern part of the continent? Is it on the, the west or the east, et cetera? So just really helping them identify the country based on um, the geography rather than the color that it is on this map. Um, and so to make sure that they were able to identify it by geography or by location rather than by the color, we did have them go around the room um, and ID it on all of the different maps. Um, another thing that I did was um, decorate the door of the classroom. So it had Morocco um, in big letters in Hebrew, um, a flag, and a bunch of pictures from all over the country. And then as they did their work throughout the weeks, we put some of it um, on the door as well. So by the end of the, the month, um, the door was filled with all of the, the different things that they did um, and, and their worksheets and things that were all related to their study of Morocco. So for instance, their boarding passes went on the door. Um, we did country fact cards. And again, the link is in the, the blog post. Um, and we also put on the door. So just kept adding things um, as time went on. Um, so yeah, we spent that first. I'm just looking over at my um, lesson plan. So I have I divide every day um, and every time slot into three because I have, again, a kindergartner, one who's in his last year of pre-K, so he does a lot of the things that the kindergartner does, but not everything, um, and then um, my younger crew who are still in their very you know, early preschool years. So every time slot that we have, that we have um, I have to plan it with those three separate blocks in mind. Um, so I'll just talk about how I do that in a separate video. Um, but so we have a really great puzzle. Um, it's a geo puzzle. You should definitely check that out. Again, link is in the bio. 
um, in the in the blog post. I don't know why I keep saying random things. The link is in the blog post. Um, and so they put together that puzzle, um, and it was, again, another way for them to identify not only the country that we were studying, but also learn the names of other countries that were around it, um, other countries that were in um, Northwest Africa. Um, talked about the capital cities, watched a number of videos. We found some great videos on YouTube and also another website called Our Africa. So you should check that out if you're studying Africa. They have um, a lot of really great videos on a lot of different topics. Um, and then at the end of every week or the Thursday of every week, um, they work on their lap book. So if you're not familiar with a lap book, definitely um, check it out on Pinterest or you could just Google it and you'll see there are so many different types. You can get as elaborate as you want. Um, and it's a really, really great educational tool, whether um, you have a student put it together as like a portfolio demonstrating everything that they've learned on a particular subject, or whether you use it as sort of a reference tool where it's something that you um, as a teacher can put it together, or it's something that you um, as the teacher or the parent and the students can work on um, over time, sort of putting things in it um, as they learn, but then also being able to come back and reference it um, for for future assignments. And so for us, we sort of did it together. So I would provide them with the lap book templates, and again, in the blog post. And at the end of every week, I would give them the templates that um, matched whatever information we covered um, during that week. So they would fill it in. So for instance, the first week, I gave them the fast facts template, which has the continent that it's on, um, the capital city, major cities, and border countries. And so they filled in all that information. Um, talking about the time differences, you know, Morocco is five hours ahead. So when it's nine o'clock in Charlotte, doing the math to figure out what time is it in Morocco. Um, and some other little things, again, that's all in the blog post. And just to show you some examples of the worksheets that are available to you. So this was one example um, of what we did here, just identifying it on a map. Um, again, and labeling it by color, showing that you know where it is. And then also here's a blank map and being able to identify um, both our focus country and then also its border countries on the map as well. Um, this is a similar worksheet, again, um, being able to identify the capital and some of the major cities and then illustrating it like however they wanted to. So we see the red city and the white city. Um, and then so our second week, and um, the links on the blog for everything are broken down by week, so you'll be able to see that if I can find what I'm looking for, which is right here. So our second week, the focus was on um, food and language. So that was, I think, probably everyone's um, favorite week. And so we, again, watched some more videos. We made a tagine out of clay um, and a flower pot. And again, you can check the weekly wrap-ups um, that we did for each week just to see um, some images and things from what we did. Um, we also made some Moroccan donuts called Svenj. Um, the recipe is on the blog. And we made mint tea. And then we also had a um, Moroccan Arabic lesson with a native speaker um, on the website italki. So um, that was fun. And then again, on the Thursday of that week, we did our um, lap books again. And to show you, so I found, these are not my original recipes. I found them, and um, the original recipes are credited at the bottom. But I just sort of rewrote them um, in a child-friendly form. Um, so this was for the sponge or the Moroccan donuts. And here's the one that we used for the, um, the mint tea. Um, okay, and then the third week we did, I have a lot of people looking at me, give me one second. Okay, so the third week we went over um, the climate um, and focused on an animal that um, is found in Morocco called the Barbary macaque, which is a type of uh, monkey. And so, again, more videos. Um, they learned how to read a bar graph, which was really cool, and then answered some questions um, related to the bar graph. So, again, these are all available to you on the website in the Learning Center. Um, and so this, again, I got the information from um, this website called Ipfactly. And, again, everything is there and just sort of, paraphrased it and put it in a child-friendly format. We read this together, watched a couple of videos, and then they filled out this um, animal profile sheet, which basically just 
pulls out some of the information that they learned. So the habitat, um, diet, one interesting fact that they learned in here, you could either have them find a picture online, cut it out, paste it here, or draw it. My boys like to draw, so that's what we had them do. Um, and then, again, that Thursday, they did the, the um, lap book related pieces or the the pieces of the lap book that were related to what they covered that week which makes a lot more sense and then the last week um we did music so they um watched again more videos videos are a really great and free way to learn a lot of things you can find a ton of stuff on youtube um but then there are other websites as well i I'm a big Google person, so you just Google what you're looking for, and you will find it. Um, also, Amazon Video has a lot of really good things. So if you have an um, Amazon Prime membership, you can access a lot of different educational videos. So Prime is more than just free two-day shipping, so definitely look into that. You are paying for it. So we made a um, gimbri, which is a Moroccan string instrument, sort of like a guitar. So we made that. Um, and then finished up our lap books, and I feel like there was something else I wanted to show you. Oh, we had this, um, Moroccan math worksheet, so when we learned about the currency, um, this is, like, a 10, I forgot the singular, I know the plural is that I but they had to count by tens, um, in order to find the answer to this math sheet. So it's a simple math worksheet, um, but that just incorporates what it is that we're doing. And then we also use a lot of different books. So here's just a sample of them. And again, the this is great. The links to everything um, are on the blog post. Traveling Man, Calabash Cat, they really liked. My Father's Shop, they love this one. This World Atlas is great. We're using this for every country that we're doing. Um, and then Africa is not a country. It's another really, really good book. So, um, this video is long enough, so hopefully that answers whatever questions you have um, about how we did this Moroccan country study um, and gives you some insight into how we're going to do the other country studies moving forward. If you have any questions, um, you can email me, info at thekefar, T-H-E-K-E-F-A-R dot com, or you can leave a comment below. Um, I'd love to hear from you, and thank you for watching. All right, bye.